Probiotics have been utilized by cultures around the world to mend injuries faster, protect from illnesses, and to improve digestion, among many other things. Despite this, there are still a lot of people that don't fully understand what probiotics even are, not to mention how good they can be for your body. Because probiotics remain mysterious to a lot of people, we are going to break down some of the top probiotics out there and inform you on when to take probiotics so that you can better utilize their unique benefits. So with all that in mind, here are 10 important facts about probiotics you must know, particularly if you are starting to try them. Number 1. What are probiotics? The simple answer to the question, what are probiotics, is that they are a combination of living, beneficial bacteria and yeasts that naturally reside in your body. A common reaction that people have when they hear bacteria is to think that it's a bad thing. But our body is absolutely filled with good, beneficial bacteria at all times. Probiotics are especially good at helping your stomach, where a bulk of bacteria live in your body. By introducing this good bacteria, your body is able to create a culture, which essentially means a little community, that is able to work together and do some amazing things. We will get into some of them later in this video, but the bacteria in your stomach alone can greatly help with digestion and help soothe it when you feel queasy or sick. Number 2. What makes a microbe a probiotic? Diving a bit deeper into just what probiotics even are. How does a microbe or a microorganism get defined as a probiotic versus any other type of bacteria? Well, there are actually requirements that the microbe must meet before it can reach that status. And having that definition will make it much easier for you to see just how helpful these things are. A microbe is considered a probiotic if it can survive in your intestine after being digested, can be safely consumed, and has a clear benefit to you. It also can't obviously come from your body, which is why you need to either eat or drink something that contains them to introduce them to your internal system. These definitions help to push away any doubts that you may have about probiotics being dangerous, and you can think of it as being just like introducing new carbs or proteins into your system and not a living organism, if that makes things easier. The truth is that everything we take in has some sort of bacteria on it, and the only difference here is that the main appeal is the bacteria itself, instead of just being a byproduct. Number 3. The probiotics market is bigger than it's ever been. Now that the whole world is starting to see the health benefits of probiotics a bit more clearly, they can't seem to get enough of them. The probiotics market has always been relatively large and made roughly $16 billion in 2008. Experts expect that by the year 2023, probiotics will make about $69.3 billion, which is a whopping 427% increase. What does this mean for people interested in probiotics? Well, simply put, it means that you are going to have an easier time finding good and trustworthy probiotic drinks and foods for cheaper than ever. There has never been a better time to get into probiotics as a consumer, and you should see even more options in the months and years to come. Number 4. The appendix is key in supporting probiotics. While the appendix is largely considered useless by the average person, and in many ways it is, your appendix actually has an important part in helping keep probiotic levels in your body high. Recently, in 2007, it was discovered by a Duke researcher that when the body is attacked by pathogens, the appendix actually begins to incubate and release probiotics to counter the foreign invader. These probiotics are usually perfectly crafted to counter that exact pathogen and destroy the threat. There are different probiotic strains, all of which can do different things for your body. And so for the appendix to be able to release the exact right one to match the situation shows that it is a much more useful organ than we once thought even if its original function has made it almost obsolete for the rest of the time. Number 5. Probiotics help fight illness and even cancer in some cases. Research is still coming in when it comes to probiotics as a tool against cancer, but early signs are promising, and in several case studies, probiotics have been found to be a very worthy cancer-fighting tool. This might not surprise you, though, as probiotics are effective at preventing flus, colds, and even herpes cells from developing further. Probiotics do a fantastic job at sweeping through your body and taking out things that aren't supposed to be there, something that even our cells can struggle with. If your cells mutate into cancer cells, probiotics have been seen to attack these cells before they have a chance to multiply and spread. Probiotics are a kind of preventative medicine to help protect your body from illness and disease, and early signs are very promising that they can do the same for cancer as well. Number 6. Probiotics can help with constipation and general gut health. Do I need probiotics? It's a question that a lot of people ask themselves, and the answer really depends on what you think you are lacking. People with IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome, or people that generally have a hard time with digestion, are perfect candidates for some probiotics, and they may actually get the most out of it. 
We have a lot of bacteria in our gut, and not all of it is good. Over time, you can start to accumulate more bad bacteria than good, and this can make it harder for your body to process and rid itself of food, leading to constipation and discomfort. Introducing the good bacteria into your stomach will clear out some of that bad stuff, and some people swear by using probiotics for this purpose. While the benefits of probiotics are so numerous we can all use it for something, perhaps the most noticeable change that people find does involve their digestive health, as having a good culture down there goes a long way. Number 7. You can make your own probiotics at home. Probiotic supplements can sometimes be costly, but that fortunately doesn't mean that you have to give up on them altogether. You can actually make your own probiotics at home easily, and it's becoming increasingly popular for people who really want to get the most personal probiotic experience that they can. Drinks like fermented lemonade and carrot juice are common ones to brew, and all you need to do is follow a few short steps to have your own personalized probiotic beverage that is unique to you. As we mentioned earlier, different strains exist, and they all do slightly different things for your body. Making your own is not only more affordable, but it allows for you to find what works best for your body, and you can even use different probiotics for different purposes. Number 8. Prebiotics Help Create Probiotics What's the difference when it comes to prebiotics versus probiotics? The easiest way to think of it is that prebiotics essentially lay the groundwork for probiotics and are almost like the fertilizer and probiotics the plant. You probably are taking in prebiotics whenever you eat, particularly with things like oats, bananas, and broccoli. The prebiotics help to cultivate an environment that probiotics can thrive in, as they can't really survive in super acidic conditions. Because of that, you could be wasting your time consuming probiotics if your body isn't set up to properly take them in. Making sure that you have both prebiotics and probiotics will make sure that things run as smoothly as possible and that your body is able to cultivate a healthy bacterial environment. Number 9. Probiotics don't stick around forever. A lot of people ask if probiotics are worth it, since they should stay in your body a long time after being introduced. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work this way, as every 12 days or so, you shed your intestinal lining, and a lot of the work you did with probiotics goes right along with it. Thankfully, there isn't really a downside to having too many probiotics, as long as you limit yourself to a maximum of two or three servings a day, so you can just reload with more. People that don't know this can often be frustrated that the effect wears off, thinking that the probiotics didn't work. But you need to consistently reintroduce prebiotics and probiotics into your body for you to get anything out of them, since you are losing a lot of that bacteria every two weeks or so. Number 10. Probiotics are responsible for about 70% of our immune response. No matter how you ingest them, whether as a probiotic supplement, a drink, or in food, you are getting potentially your biggest ally to your immune system. Not only do probiotics outnumber your actual cells to a staggering degree, but they are also responsible for about 70% of your immune response. If you are missing key probiotics, you could be putting yourself at risk of illness, and in these modern times, that could lead to serious consequences. There are a lot of reasons to take the ingestion of probiotics seriously, but maybe the most important factor here is the bacteria's ability to protect you and act as a shield against outside forces. How do you like to get your probiotics? Let us know in the comment section. Here are two more videos you might find interesting. Feel free to choose the one you like. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share the video with your friends. And for more interesting videos on health, subscribe to the channel.